Hilltop Battle from Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. You know, we all need a little help sometimes. Let's see what happens today in our Bible account. The Israelites were traveling through the desert, camping at different places that God showed them as he led them from Egypt to their own land. Besides leading them, God also provided food and water for the people in amazing ways. Remember? Bread came from the sky. They called it manna. And then he gave them quail. And then Moses struck the rock. And water came out when they needed water. The journey was not easy. But the Israelites were learning that God was taking care of them. But then trouble struck. The Israelites were camped at Rephidim, where God had just miraculously given them water out of a rock when a group of people called the Amalekites came and attacked them. Moses had a helper named Joshua. Joshua loved God and wanted to obey him. As soon as the Amalekites attacked, Moses called for his assistant, Joshua. He wanted Joshua's help to deal with these Amalekite bullies, who obviously wanted to pick a fight with the people of Israel. In Exodus 17, verse 9, we find Moses' instructions to Joshua. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. Moses was planning to pray. Moses would take his staff, which God had given him as the symbol of leadership, and go up to the top of the hill and pray. The next day, Joshua followed Moses' directions. He took some of the Israelite men to fight the Amalekites. Moses went to the top of the hill with his brother Aaron and his friend Hur to pray. As the fighting began, Moses held up his hands to God. The Israelites began to win. But after a while, Moses lowered his hands. What happened? Exodus 17.11 tells us, When he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Suddenly, the Amalekites began to win the battle. So, Moses raised his hands to God again. And suddenly, Israel began to win again. It became very clear that as long as Moses' hands stayed up, the Israelites were victorious. But whenever Moses' hands were down, the Amalekites started to win. Can you imagine how hard it would be to hold up your arms for a whole day? But Moses knew he had to do it somehow. Keeping his arms up was a way of showing that he trusted God to help the Israelites in the battle. But it was hard. As the day wore on, Moses got tired. He was going to need some help. Exodus 17.12 tells us, But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side, the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Aaron and Hur held up Moses' hands. Aaron and Hur got a large stone for Moses to sit on. That way he wouldn't be tired. Then Aaron stood on one side of Moses, and Hur stood on the other side, and each of them held up one of Moses' arms. This way, Moses could keep his hands held high to the Lord. Aaron and Hur helped Moses all day long. They must have been very strong men with a tremendous amount of patience. But like Moses, they knew how important it was to keep trusting in God. Aaron and Hur knew that if the Israelites were going to win the victory, they had to help Moses. So they didn't give up holding his arms. Moses' hands stayed up, and Joshua and his men kept fighting all day long. Finally, at sunset, the last Amalekite was defeated. Israel won the battle. 
But it wasn't the Israelites' great fighting that won the battle. No, God gave Israel the victory because Moses, with the help of his friends, kept his hands lifted up to God and kept trusting in him to help them. After the battle, God told Moses to write down the great victory that had taken place and to make sure Joshua heard what was written. Exodus 17:14 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. After Moses died, Joshua would be the leader of Israel, and God wanted Joshua to trust him always. To celebrate the victory and to thank God for his help, Moses built an altar out of stones. Then he gave the altar a name. He called it, The Lord is My Banner, or Jehovah Nissi. A banner is something people hold up high to show what team they belong to or whose group they're with. By giving the altar that name, Moses was reminding the Israelites that they belonged to God and that the victory they had won was God's victory. Being attacked by the Amalekites was a hard thing for Moses and all the Israelites to go through. We all go through times when things are tough. Maybe our favorite toy breaks or a friend is mean to us or we have trouble in our families. And during times like that, we need to remember that God knows the best way to help us. Ephesians 6.18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Let's say it together. Ephesians 6.18 Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. God wants us to pray to Him in our tough situations, like Moses did, and never give up. So when you're in a tough situation, what we need to do is go to God in prayer, believe and trust Him, and never give up. But sometimes... When life gets really hard, we need help even to pray. We need friends who will help us, like Aaron and her, help Moses. How did they help Moses? They stood with him, they gave him a stone to sit on, and they held up his arms all day long. And not only do we need friends, but we can also be friends to other people who are going through hard times. It's good for us to help each other by praying and trusting in God. So when Moses held up his hands on the hillside, he was praying and showing that the Israelites were depending on God's help. God's help in response to prayer is very clear in this account of the Israelites' defeat of the Amalekites. Moses celebrated the victory by building an altar called the Lord is my banner. When he had his arms up like that, it was as if he was holding up a banner that said God was winning the battle for everyone to see. And the prophet Isaiah later wrote that the Messiah, Jesus, will stand as a banner for the peoples. Isaiah 11 verse 10 says, In that day the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. Wow, Jesus is our banner. And as long as Moses kept his hands raised in prayer to God, his banner, the Israelites were victorious. In the same way that Moses prayed to and trusted God for victory, we can pray to Jesus and trust him to save us and to help us. We find salvation and victory only when we look to Jesus, 
the Lord is my banner, Jehovah Nisi. So we, when we have tough times, we need to lift up our eyes into the hills from whence comes our help. Lift up the hands which hang down and pray to the Lord and trust in the Lord, the Lord our banner, Jehovah Nisi. Almost got it. No. Uh, hey, Hoops, how's it going? It's not good. I'm trying to get this banner home for Spirit Week, and it's just not going as planned. Here, why don't we both do our part? Let's stretch it back out. I'll grab one end, you grab the other. Yeah, that sounds great. We did it. Yeah. We're like a crazy awesome banner hanging team. Hey, and thanks for your help, Homer. I couldn't have done that without you. Just doing my part, dude. Yeah, you know what this reminds me of? Remember that Moses, Joshua, and Aaron play-by-play? -play? Yeah, they really knew the meaning of every player on the team doing their part. Check it out. Welcome, sports fans. I'm Phil, the announcer dude, along with my co-host here, Gary Sports Talker Guy. And we are here with the play-by-play -play of the day. It's the Israelites versus the Amalekites in a head-to-head -head battle for the win. Let's see how this one plays out. Phil, this looks like it's going to be a tough go for Team Israelites. True, Gary, very true. It looks like we have the Israelites on defense, and the Amalekites have begun on an offensive attack. Here comes the star player for the Team Israelites. Moses. And in a strategic move, Moses is telling his teammate Joshua to choose some players who can help battle this Amalekite attack. Wise decision. And now Moses is positioning himself so he can see every play. Great move as Moses lets Joshua know that he'll be at the top of the hill holding the special stick that God had given him. Here we see Joshua with his added players ready to fight on the field. As the whistle blows, they're up. Meanwhile, our team players, Moses, Aaron, and Her, watch from up on the sidelines. You'd think because Moses wasn't in the battle that he was out of the game, but that's not the case. That's right, Gary. Notice how if Moses' hands go down, the Amalekites start winning, but as long as he keeps his hands up, Team Israelites are in the lead. It looks as if Aaron and Hur noticed this too. They sure did, and they worked their best game right there from the sidelines. It's a great team effort as each of those players hold up Moses' hand. Ooh, the battle on the field has gone into overtime. Phil, we can tell these players are getting tired. But even in these last few minutes of overtime, Joshua and his team continue to do their part on the field as Aaron and her do their part to keep Moses' hands in the winning position. And here's the next play. Could this be the end of our overtime? Why, yes it is! Looks like the Israelites have won! There it is, folks. Team Israelites, take the win. Ah, what a game, Gary. Here we see a classic example of teamwork. That's right. Each player on the Israelite team did their part, which has brought home a victory. It's the classic saying, on God's team, players do their hey, part. Hey, congrats, Israelites. Another great game in the books. We'll see you next time for our play-by-play -play of the day. Signing off, I'm Gary, the Sports Talker Guy. And I'm Phil, the Announcer Dude.